Hi, welcome back. So today what I'm going to do is show you how you can check the system pressure of your car without any special tools, just using the information from the dashboard from the brake pressure switches. You do rely on the brake pressure switches working properly, but it's, uh, it's an easy way to see what the system's doing and whether you need to change anything. It's basically to see whether your valve bodies are holding pressure and whether your spheres have any gas in them. The way we're gonna do it is run the system up to full pressure. That means to run your engine for enough time that the brake pumps have built up the pressure to full system pressure, so 2,500 PSI. And then we're gonna turn the engine off. That's gonna mean that any pressure in the system, nothing else is gonna be added to it. It's just what you've got stored in the valve bodies is, is what you've got. So we're gonna put the ignition back on without running the engine. That's gonna mean that when the pressure does fall below the brake switch pressure, the lights will come on. So then you'll know, so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna pump the pedal repeatedly, which will decrease the pressure in the system each time you pump. If you've got a good pressure in your spheres, that should take, the, the more pressure you've got in your spheres, the more pumps you'll get before the lights come on. If you only get 10 or 20 pumps, you haven't got enough pressure in your spheres and you risk brake failure on the road. Usually it's 50 to 60 pumps. Now, the videos that we've done recently have been showing a brake pump from a shadow. This is a later car, this is a Brooklands. Now, this uses uh, mineral oil, uh, LHM plus mineral oil and not RR363 brake fluid. And it's a very important thing not to mix the two. But the principle's the same. There's two brake pumps driven by the camshaft that feed pressure to a valve body regulator, and they have a sphere or accumulator screwed into the valve body with a diaphragm with a, a gas pressure on one side. And as the pumps produce pressure into the valve body, that presses against the diaphragm which is your basically your reserve of pressure. If you didn't have the valve bodies, sorry, if you didn't have the spheres or the accumulators and you pressurized the system and there was no reserve of pressure, as soon as you touch the brakes, you're gonna lose all that pressure because you can't compress a liquid. So that's the job of the, the spheres. What tends to happen is the diaphragms can split or over time the, the pressure is lost and you're effectively, you've got no reserve of pressure. So what will happen is you run the engine, it'll go to full pressure, the lights will go off, it will look like you've got full pressure and as soon as you press the brakes, the lights will come back on. So I'm gonna show you what it should look like and how you can check that pressure. I'm gonna take you over to the dashboard to show you the lights on the dash and show you what it should look like. Okay, so here's the dashboard on our Bentley Brooklands. Um, this is this car's been sat for a few days, so it's likely that the pressure in the system has fallen because the valve bodies, over time, the non-return valve, it will let go and you will lose pressure. So I'm gonna start the, I'll put the ignition on first. So there you can see, systems check, the brake stop light is flashing, right? And the brake pressure warning light is on. Okay, so that means there's not enough pressure in the system at the moment to reset, to set the lights off. Okay, so I'm gonna start it. Right, so it hasn't been run for a little while, so I'm just gonna hold the revs up and what this will do, we'll just run the brake pumps out a little bit faster so one of the lights has gone off now. You're still getting a warning light on. But I'm just gonna hold the revs up until both lights go out. I'm just gonna take that part brake off. Right, okay. All brake pressure lights are off. That other one might have been the uh, parking light as well. But So now we're gonna leave it running a little bit longer because the lights go off 
below a thousand psi i think so it doesn't mean it's reached full system pressure just because your lights have gone off so what i'm going to do is just hold the revs up a little bit just for a couple of minutes just to get the system fully pressurized The best way to do this test is actually removing the brake, so depressurizing the system, then removing the brake pressure switches and connecting a gauge, a pressure gauge, in place of the switches. And then you can run the engine and watch exactly what's happening in the system. You can see exactly what the pressure goes up to, where it, where it holds, and then, and also the flick up pressure. So the flick up pressure is the initial pressure that you get when you start the engine and it's what is basically it's the amount of pressure in the spheres so we're going to assume that that's fully pressurized now it's been running for a little while so now i'm going to turn the engine off so that means that no more pressure is able to be supplied to the valve bodies we've got the ignition back on and as you can see, there's no pressure lights on. We're not going to run the engine because we don't want to add any more pressure to the systems. So now I'm going to start pressing the pedal. You can hear me pressing the pedal all the way down on and off again. Right. So that's about 50 pumps and we've got the brake pressure light on. Now that's not bad. There was enough pressure in the system. A couple more to keep it, it's obviously leveled up. But yeah, that, that, that means there's a, enough pressure in the spheres that you could get 50 pumps of the pedal before the light came on. And if we start it again now, The lights have gone straight off again, so it's obviously just building up pressure again, and that that's not an issue. So that that's what you're looking for, at least 50 pumps. Um, if you're getting, if it's coming on straight away, then you need to be very careful. There you go, lights back on. So yeah, it's low enough pressure for the lights to come on. Now I can't remember on this car whether it does anything differently for system one and system two. If you've got a silver shadow, then you'll um you'll have system one and system two. So you can actually determine which system is um low on pressure. So that's how you can test the brake pressure system on your car as long as your brake pressure switches are working as they should. Thanks for watching.